today I will be talking about the ocean sunfish, also called a mola mola. Uh, for the purposes of this slide, I will be referring to them specifically as mola molas or just molas because there are multiple different species of sunfish um, that are drastically different from the mola mola. So just for the sake of this uh, presentation, I will just be referring to them as mola molas. So their name, yes, is the ocean sunfish, also called the mola mola. They are in the class Actinopterygii, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They are in the order of Tetrodontiforms, uh, family Molidae, and genus Mola. So what do they look like? Well, the mola mola fish is the largest, quote, bonied bodied fish, unquote, in the sea. This essentially means that they are a burlap sack full of bones, or at least they used to be. Due to evolution, those uh, bones have now turned into cartilage, and they are now considered a burlap sack full of cartilage, uh, similar to their first cousins, the shark. So, physically, they are comprised of what is just looks like a fish head with fins. Uh, that actual fish head is just their entire body. Uh, the top fin is called a dorsal fin, while the lower fin is called an anal fin, and as well, they have a pseudo tail called a clavis on the back half of their body. Um, molas can grow up from 10 feet in length as well as up to almost 14 feet from fin to fin. And most mature adults can weigh anywhere from 547 to 2200 pounds. However, larger specimens have been discovered. The largest weighing a little over 5,000 pounds. For reference, that is about the size of a Dodge Caravan minivan. So if you've ever seen a minivan uh, swimming in the ocean, I would run the other way or swim the other way. The mola mola is a very special organism because it is just hilarious. It looks so stupid. It looks not real. It looks like a Pokemon. However, this is something that you can find in our oceans. Mola molas have a small beak that sits inside their lips and those lips never close. So essentially they just look shocked all the time. They look like you just told them a secret that they were not expecting. Mola molas also lack a swim bladder. Again, similar to their first cousins, the sharks. Uh, swim bladders essentially are used for controlling the buoyancy of the body in the water. However, in order to combat this, uh, the fact that they cannot control their buoyancy, they don't have a swim bladder. Mola molas have just adapted by vigorously flapping their dorsal and anal fins. Additionally, mola molas cannot thermoregulate themselves. They cannot control uh, the temperature of their bodies, again, like sharks. So in order to combat this, they perform a <laughs> just hilarious form of sun basking by laying flat on the ocean surface. Most of the time, fishermen will come by and pick them up, believing that they are dead. And because mola mola fish can only swim up to about three and a half miles per hour, they can't really get away. So a lot of molas just end up dying because fishermen think they're already dead. Molas have the most drastic size change in the animal kingdom, as if they couldn't already get any more unique. Baby mola fish can grow up to 60 million times their original size. As you can see from those lower photos, those are a pair of baby mola fish. Those fish are extremely fresh. They were just born and or hatched. Well, eggs, so hatch. Unfortunately, though, not a lot of information is known about the mola fish as far as their life cycles and reproductive systems are concerned. Um, there was one mola fish in captivity. There are multiple molas in captivity. Um, the only evidence of one dying in captivity, he lived to be about 10 years old. He was picked up at around nine months old, and between nine months and 15 months, he grew about 3,000 times his original size. Um, so they grow very fast, they grow rapidly, and they get big. And females can carry up to 300 million eggs inside their body at any point in time, which they can also excrete at predators in order to get away, similar to that of like a squid or an octopus uh, excreting their ink, except it's their children. They throw their children at predators. Now, mola diets consist mainly of small fish, octopus, squid, and jellyfish. However, they are also known to eat fish larvae because, as I discussed on the previous slide, mola molas do not care about children. 
They will throw them at anything, and they will eat the babies. Mola molas are also partially responsible for controlling invasive jellyfish populations. Uh, another living organism that helps with jellyfish populations is sea turtles. Sea turtles also eat jellyfish. However, sea turtles more so eat jellyfish to get high off of them because their neurotoxins make them all loopy. Mola molas eat them for sustenance. Also, adult molas uh, perform deep dives up to 700 feet to find food, even going as far to the sea floor in some zones. And their biggest predators include their first cousins, the sharks, uh, sea lions, as you can see here, as well as orcas. However, it is rare when a mola mola is attacked by an orca because they just live in completely opposite water climates. Orcas are typically found in a lot colder climates, whereas if a mola mola is to sit in a water or in a body of water that is 50 degrees Fahrenheit or below for too long, it will, oh, excuse me, it will die. So they can't really sit in cold water that often, and they're not found in cold water that often. Um, rarely, every once in a while, some are found in the uh, lower part of, of, of England. Um, but that's only because of how closely related that part of the water body is to the Gulf Stream, and they're often found in the Gulf Stream. Molas have developed symbiotic relationships, which is a shocker because it's, un it's unfathomable how any other creature would find these fish attractive. During their basking process, however, molas allow albatross, yes, the bird, to come down to the water and pluck parasites off of their skin. In this case, symbiotic because the mola molas have no longer have parasites and the albatross are fed. Also, mola molas do not have scales like other fish. Rather, they have a loose textured baggy skin, which can range in color from a shiny silver to a mutated gray with spots. Here are my sources. Okay, thanks, bye.